Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Just a bit of fun today, I'm doing a silly little feature called Plants vs Zooflora. I'm actually using that as a reference for cleaning chemicals in general. But um, there's actually a computer game called Plants vs Zombies. My six year old son played it at his friend's house recently and the plants uh, basically get invaded and the house plants get invaded by zombies and I think they just try and kind of eat up all the zombies. And I feel like there's a bit of the same relationship going on with plants and with uh, chemicals in our homes and particularly in my home if it's passed you by there's a big cleaning movement in the UK at the moment everyone's crazy into cleaning chemicals are flying off the shelves there's Instagrammers and YouTubers who are sharing their cleaning routines they're sh sharing their cleaning tips everyone loves it everyone's finding new products and uh, there's a big thing for showing how your products are stored and having um, lots of supplies of all these different products in particular things like Zooflora everyone's going crazy for they love the fragrance um, they love the mental well-being feeling of just having a tidy home and I'm all for it I absolutely I'm not naturally motivated to clean so I love watching a good time-lapse cleaning video that gets me in the mood for doing it so no problems with that but I personally don't feel massively comfortable with the huge amount of chemicals we've started to uh, use as a result and people get quite carried away so it's not a question of just perhaps using a small dose for this of this once a week they're literally smothering everything they own in these chemicals and um, they're trying to create a constant fragrance in their home and it's possible that that's not actually the best thing to do so just to highlight some of the information I think when you do an initial google search about some of these products you quickly your fears are alleviated it doesn't they don't seem that bad but when you kind of go beneath that there's actually some information out there that I think personally uh, makes me want to err on the side of caution with these products so Here's a little uh, a little feature to bring some of these facts to life. Okay, so let's start with Zooflora. Now, some fragrances and some flavours of Zooflora, and you can find out all about them by looking on their website. Um, you can just find their safety data sheet, and that breaks down exactly what's in each product for you. Some of these uh, flavours of, of Zooflora contain limonene. So limonene in itself isn't actually a problem, but once it's exposed to ozone, which is present in the air all around us, limonene actually turns into formaldehyde, which is a chemical that we know isn't particularly good for us. Since the 1980s, it's been linked with cancer, and uh, since 2011, it's actually been listed as a known human carcinogen. So not something that you massively want to create in your house. On the other hand, something like the Boston Fern, which I've already highlighted in one of my videos as being particularly good for moisture levels and absorbing moisture in the air, also improves the air quality of indoor environments by absorbing formaldehyde. It also absorbs other things like benzene, trichlorothaline, xylene and toline, and uh, generally reduces people's exposure to these, these airborne chemicals. Um, so it's a really good thing to have around and will counter the impact of things like zooflora that contain limonene. Okay, so secondly, we'll look at flowora. It sounds really familiar, actually. I don't know where they got that name from. Anyway, this is from the pound shop, and it's a fragrance uh, disinfectant. And on this packaging, as with a lot of cleaning chemical packaging, it says, harmful to aquatic life with long-lasting effects. Now, just kind of makes you sad, really. We need to look after our aquatic life, that's a no-brainer. And so on the other hand, if we take the weeping fig or the ficus, um, this is actually once again proven by NASA to improve the indoor air quality of your home. Once again, it absorbs things like formaldehyde, xylene and toluene. It can be toxic to cats and dogs though, so that is worth bearing in mind, as can some of these products, so always think about your pets. So now onto spray products such as this one. These have actually been linked recently with a reduction in lung function. So there was a study, and I'll link it below, that found that 20 years exposure to products such as these on a daily basis can actually be the same equivalent as having smoked 20 cigarettes a day. So once again, it's a study there's lots of opinions about, but it's definitely worth bearing in mind if you're using these products regularly. House plants, on the other hand, can actually improve air quality and enhance lung function for people who are suffering from lung uh, conditions. So for example, this is the mother-in-law's tongue, and this is particularly good for improving the air quality and the oxygen levels in your home. So it's also known as the snake plant, and it's unique for its ability for nighttime oxygen production and its general ability to purify air through the removal of the uh, substances that we've mentioned before. And finally, what looks nicer? Would you like to have uh, these synthetic looking uh, packaging everywhere, which I know you can store nicely in baskets, but nonetheless, it's still not natural and real. Or you can have a beautiful, colorful, 
fresh plants to brighten up your home. So I know what I would choose. Now that is in no means a comprehensive view of all the risks of chemicals or all the benefits of plants. And as I said before, the jury's still out on some of the uh, factors about some of these products. But I felt overall looking at the evidence, personally, I would prefer to reduce my consumption of these as much as possible. And it is worth noting that everyone's susceptibility to adverse effects from these things is different. Some people are very sensitive, that's increasingly coming to light. Okay. And uh, this guy here has actually just come to join me for the end of the video, who's uh, a reason as much as possible to reduce your chemical consumption, I think, because you're the future and you suffer a little bit with your chest, don't you, and your skin. So uh, it's good to keep our house as healthy as possible for you. Um, but yeah, draw your own conclusions about what you want to do. But my own feeling that it is that it isn't great for the environment or our health or the health of our families to uh, really ramp up massively our use of chemicals in our homes. I think we need to be looking to reduce them as much as possible. So plants versus zooflora. What wins for us, Magnus? Plants. Yay! <laughs> So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thanks, Magnus. You can be my thumb upper. Um, and share it with anyone who you think might find interesting. I'm really interested in your thoughts, feelings, I think, as well on this issue because it's, it's a gut feeling I've got about this as much as anything. Um, but yeah, please do come back soon and don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye for now. Mwah.